Hey everybody, Brian from Innisfil Creek County. Uh, today, we're going to talk about and assemble our uh, bee box system from Paradise Honey. Uh, the bee box was created many, many years ago by Paradise Honey, a company out of Finland. Uh, it's a bee box system built out of uh, EPS, which is expanded polystyrene. Very, very hard polystyrene. It's, it's almost the texture of wood. It has uh, six or seven times the R value of wood. Um, so when your bees are in the beehive, um, they have a lot more insulation value in the boxes, making it easier for them to maintain a temperature inside that hive uh, in the summer and important to us in Canada also in the winter. Okay. So uh, we're gonna talk about the, the system here and then, and then we're gonna put it together. So the tools you're gonna need to start with are uh, some kind of uh, waterproof wood glue. So any brand will do, just waterproof wood glue. Um, you're gonna need a mallet, a piece of wood uh, for pounding on, because you don't wanna pound directly on the styrofoam. You'll, you'll use this as a buffer. You'll also need a couple of screws. These are just uh, number eight by one half uh, wood screws um, and a screwdriver. Uh, any kind of screw will work. You'll need a couple of them. So we're gonna start with the bottom board. The bottom board of the hive. Um, this is the bottom board. Um, it's a screen bottom board. So you'll have a, a hollow cavity in the center. Um, the bottom has some legs on it and then some corrugated parts to add strength and rigidity to it. So when you're putting your bottom board together, place it down like this. It has a aluminum mesh screen that is going to go in the uh, recessed area there. Very easy to figure it out. There's a recessed lip there. This sets down in there. And then this is where we're gonna need our wood screws. So you just any kind of wood screw. When you put this in, it sort of wiggles around a little bit and pops up. We wanna make sure that that's adhered down. So I'm just gonna put one wood screw um, at the front. And it's surprising how tough this styrofoam is when you're screwing in the screws, it feels like you're screwing it into wood. So I put one at the front there and one at the back, um, just in the lips there to hold that screen down. Um, and then just feel, if you feel it's popped up anywhere, you can put another screw maybe here and here if you need to. This screen is setting really, really well in there. You really don't need much in there because as soon as the bees live in here for a little while, they're gonna put propolis in or all up around here and build this all up with propolis and seal it in anyways. So those two screws look like they're gonna hold it in quite well. There's also a piece of coroplast and this is the drawer slide for your screen bottom board. It just slides in the back and creates a bottom um, below your screen section there. That's for checking for mites or at times when you want to um, reduce the ventilation in the hive. So through the winter months and stuff like that. The uh, Paradise Honey actually suggests that you leave this out most of the year and only put it in possibly in the winter months and also um, in March, April when uh, the brood is being raised in the spring when it's cool out. So they, they suggest to put it in for those months. Um, and then once the summer months come, they suggest actually pulling it out and leaving it out for the rest of the year to allow for ventilation inside the hive. So that's your bottom board so far. At this point in time, we'll also put together our um, entrance reducer. So this is an integrated entrance reducer. It comes with three pieces. Um, you just simply slide them on the end and we'll slide this one on the end and this sits on top of the hive in a slot right along the front and you set that right in there like this. Now um, the boxes will sit on top and when you want to open the hive you slide them back and forth to open the entrance as big as you want it to. Or if you're moving the bees, you close it right up and you could just move the bees. So really nice that way. So the entrance reducer is in there. And then... So we finished the bottom board. 
We're gonna move on to the next uh, item, which is the deep boxes. To put your deep box together, you're gonna need a little bit of an outdoor glue of some kind, some sort of waterproof glue, any brand will do. A mallet, a hammer will work, but you gotta be very careful because you don't wanna damage the, uh, the EPS foam. A uh, mallet works well. Uh, a wooden block is really nice. And some kind of a paintbrush, or what I like to use is just a Q-tip for spreading the glue around on the surfaces when you're gluing things together. Um, very easy to put together. Um, there are two profiles of plastic items. So if you look at this, at the ends of these, you can see there's two different profiles. This one on the right has the little ledge on, on it here. It is for the uh, top edge of the box, and this one doesn't have that little edge, it's for the bottom edge. To put them on, you pick up your front rail or your front board, um, turn it so it says B box, so you're reading the, 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 the uh, text on it, and then match the profile up with the profile of the plastic, and then simply just slide that on. Uh, until it matches on both edges. Then we'll flip this over, take the bottom piece, and do the same thing. Just line it up and slide it on until it, it, it's equal from one side to the other. We'll move on to the next piece. And we'll grab the top piece, make sure again B box is facing up. Line it up to the uh, the right profile, slide it on, make sure it's snapped in, and then we'll flip it over and do the same to the next one. Okay. So we've put all the plastic pieces on, check them, make sure they're snapped in really well. Then what we want to do is take our glue, and if you come in and look at these uh, tenons coming out of here. You can see there's some grooved edges on here. You want to take your glue and you want to put glue on those surfaces, a little bit on the flat surfaces. You don't want to put any on these surfaces here because that'll stop it from sliding in. You'll get your Q-tip and spread the glue around on all those surfaces. Um, on all of those surfaces you put glue on, just spread it all around. Very, very light. You may almost need no glue, so you don't want big globs. You want a very light, 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 light film of glue on there. When you get all of the uh, surfaces done on this um, with a little light film of glue, and then we want to put them together. So we're going to pick up the items. We're going to make sure that V-Box, the text on it is sitting the right direction on all of them when we put them together. Uh, so we make sure we don't put them upside down. We'll just line up the, uh, the tenons to the joint there. And then uh, double check, make sure we're putting V-Box again, uh, facing the same direction. Just tapping it in with my hand to get it seated. Flip it over, again double checking that the V box is all facing the same direction. Uh, it is possible to put these together uh, upside down, so this will fit this way, and you won't notice it's that way until you try to put it together and it doesn't work and uh, the, the frames don't fit in properly. So do make sure that all of the items are, or all the sides are faced in the right direction. So we'll line up the other side, pound it down a little bit with our hands, and this is where that block is gonna come in. We're gonna set the block at the corner of the joint. Um, we're going to protect the styrofoam by spreading the, the strength out of the hip. We're gonna get our mallet. Couple firm hits, uh, not too hard, but hard enough to seat that joint. Um, and we're done. So if you look at this, the joints are really nice in there. Um, it's got the nice edge to put your frames in, um, in here. Um, and it has really nice hand holds on all four sides. So really nice areas to hold on to. Uh, so we've made our box, our deep box, and it nests and sits 
really easily on top of your bottom board. So when you look at all the pieces of the hive, it's got little ledges and seats um, all the way built around so that when you take your, your next component and set it on top, it will set on top and lock into place. So it holds all the components together down below it. So we got the deep box together. Um, we're now gonna put our medium box together. Uh, medium box to get, uh, goes exactly together exactly the same as the deep box does. Same exact components, they're just thinner. So the medium box is thinner. Uh, we'll grab our uh, front sides, same. We'll grab the profile that matches the top profile. We'll line that up, um, get that started in there, slide it in. Most of these profiles will slide on very easily just with your hands. Sometimes you do find a, a one that does require a little bit of tapping. Um, you can you know, use a mallet or you could just push down on it with anything. It, it, they actually do, do go on very, very easy. I flipped it over, now I'm gonna put the bottom slide on. Got that one done. Grab the next uh, front or back piece. Make sure I get the right profile uh, for the top. Let's put that on the top one. It's a lot easier to do this when you're not uh, in front of a camera doing. So. so we get that on there. Put the bottom one on. Uh, every once in a while, you get one of these that uh, it'll ride up a little bit on the uh, styrofoam. You can just click, click it down with your hands. It snaps in really easy. So we have those in. Again, you will take your glue. I'm not actually putting glue on these because we're, we're using this as an example. Uh, we'll, tell, we'll show use this one in the shop to show everybody in the shop how to put stuff together. Uh, you again take your glue, put glue on all of the... Uh, surfaces here and the flats. Don't put any, again, on these surfaces here. Just on the flat here and on the edges around. Then take your Q-tip again, smooth it out very, very thin. And really, honestly, make sure it's a very thin layer, an extremely thin layer. You can miss a few spots, it doesn't matter. You just want enough glue on there to hold it in place after you put the joint together. So after you, glue, after you put glue on all the edges, around here same process make sure b box is facing up and b box is facing up uh, slide the pieces together A little tap with your hand take the next one Tap it together, flip it over, top piece, make sure the D-box is facing up. Uh, the first time I did the video, I had one of the panels upside down. Uh, so very important to uh, make sure you have the uh, side panels facing the right direction. And again, Really important that you have the side panels facing in the right direction. And again, we'll grab our block, uh, set our block on the corner, get our hammer, some forceful uh, pounds on the corners. Make sure it's seated in there quite nicely. And that is your top box completed. We can now take our top box and like I said, all the, all the boxes fit nest together. So if you had another deep box, it would nest on top of this box. You can nest the mediums on top of every other box. They nest in and lock in a little bit so they, they can't slide off. These uh, plastic pieces on the edges are for you to put your hive tool in. So when you're tearing your box apart, you don't put your hive tool in on the edge here you put your hive tool in between the two pieces of plastic uh, to protect the styrofoam from your hive tool. Um, so that's why they put that in there. It also makes it so it's easier for them to, to, to break apart because the propolis doesn't stick as well to the plastic um, as it does to wood or styrofoam. Um, so that's what that's there for. 
So we have our second box done. If you use nine frames in your Honey Supers, um, there's also nine frame spacers built for your Honey Supers. Um, there are two little strips like this. They will offset your frames. Um, so they're spaced exactly the right distance apart to fit nine in a 10 frame box. Uh, to put them in, you just flip it up on its side and on the top rail here, um, you just slide it between the plastic and the styrofoam. So I'll just tuck that in there, make sure it's in there pretty tight. Okay, like that. Flip the box over, take the next nine frame spacer, start it in there. And it's just a friction fit. Um, it fits really, really tight. So once you get it in there, it's really not gonna come out. Um, and then the bees are gonna propolize it all anyway. So you don't have to really worry about it falling out. So then we have our nine frame spacers in there. And like I said, they'll hold the frames exactly the, the, the equidistance apart to allow for that thicker uh, wax production um, on it um, to make your uh, drawn comb out that much thicker to make it easier to process. Your queen excluder. After your frames are on there, you're gonna put your honey super on. They have a, a, a special queen excluder that fits this hive perfectly. Uh, and that sits right on top like that. So before you're gonna put your honey super on, you would put the queen excluder on top and then your honey super on top to keep the queen down in the root chamber. Okay. So just that that is the queen excluder. It fits specifically on the Paradise Honey Bee Box Hive. Um, the other ones uh, that are generic may or may not fit. So if you have queen excluders at home, they may or may not work exactly the same as this because of the dimensions. Okay. So just be aware of that. Now, if you're gonna feed your bees, uh, Paradise Honey has this really nice feeder. It's a hive top chimney type feeder. Um, holds a, about two gallons of liquid um, or eight liters. Um, because it's European, I guess we should do the liter thing. Um, so it'll hold about eight liters of liquid. Um, and it's a very simple feeder. It has a chimney in the bottom that goes up the front side here, out here. You, this will sit on top of your beehive. And it has this little plastic guard. We'll pull off the protective uh, white sheet. And to put this together, you just simply slide this in the groove there and push it down and seat it in that position there. Now what this does is the bees can now come up out of the beehive, come through that little slot, walk over the edge, um, drink the sugar syrup that's in the feeder, and this little plastic guard protects them from getting into um, the open body of the sugar syrup. Very nice feeder, very simple feeder, very simple design, works really, really well. Then on the top of the beehive goes the lid. So the lid has a little bit of assembly, not much. It has these little plastic clips and they are strap clips. Um, if you're strapping your hive down, so they just one on each side in these little uh, indentation spots, you just set one on each side, they clip in top. So then you just clip them in place and then your hive top fits on top of your beehive like that. And that is your beehive. Um, this little strap area here is if you use ratchet straps, you can run your ratchet strap over the hive and then strap it down to your hive stand. And these little uh, plastic pieces will protect the box, the, the EPS from any tension, it'll have to spread the tension out. Um, if you want to collect propolis, uh, they develop a propolis trap for your uh, beehive. You would have your frames in your honey super whatever the top box is of your hive. Um, and then they have this uh, propolis trap that will sit on top of that. 
the uh, it creates an uncomfortable space and then your lid fits on top of that okay. um, and that is your beehive so that is our beehive um, it's a really nice system built-in insulation no need to wrap your beehive for winter um, it has six times the insulation value of a wooden box um, even with a wooden box wrapped for winter, this probably has more insulation value than most beehives going into winter. Um, a nice modular system with that really nice built-in uh, entrance reducer. The uh, wooden honey supers, if you already have wooden components, um, you can use your wooden honey supers on top of this. The important part of the bee box system is not the honey super sections. It is the brood chamber because that's the chamber that's going to live over winter. Um, and if your brood chamber is insulated well, that's uh, good enough. Um, if you already have wooden boxes, you can stack them on top for honey supers. Um, harvest your honey out of your wooden uh, boxes. And then over winter, just your styrofoam boxes. So, so understand that if you already have an operation with wooden boxes and your wooden boxes aren't wasted, um, you can integrate them right into uh, this uh, system. One final component to uh, finish off our Paradise Honey uh, Bee Box system. It's not uh, that fancy, but it's a nice little nifty pollen uh, trap. So this is a nice little pollen trap. A very cost-effective pollen trap fits on the front of the beehive so you don't have to get into your beehive and change a whole bunch of components to get it in. All you have to do is take your entrance reducer out of your Paradise Honey Bee Box. Then you slide, lift it up a little bit, slide the tabs of that in, lock it into place. Now it's blocking the entrance of the beehive. And if you look inside here, there's a little tiny, almost like a queen excluder inside, that when the bees go into the beehive, they uh, squeeze through the little tiny holes inside and it pulls the pollen socks off their ankles. The pollen then drops down through the bottom little grate here into this bin that is removable from the outside. Um, so you can come and harvest your, your pollen, throw it into a little box, bring it in the house, and then slide it back in to collect more. Um, so that's a nifty little add-on feature for our bee box system. Uh, so uh, that is the pollen trap, a nice little addition to the uh, beekeeping system. Um, that pollen trap could easily be modified to fit into a regular wooden leg straw hive into the front entrance. Um, a nice, a cost-effective way to collect pollen. Uh, you don't have to buy a huge, very expensive pollen trap. You can buy this nice little one, treat it nice, it'll last forever. So, that's our Paradise Honey Bee Box system that we are now carrying in, in our store. Uh, a nice little system um, if you're looking at starting new or uh, changing your, your, your beekeeping uh, practices, trying to make your bees live through winter. Uh, any of these boxes can be painted with any exterior latex paint. Um, the painting of the boxes will help uh, make them last a little longer. Uh, it'll help protect the outside edge from the UV rays of the sun. Um, when you're painting them, all you need to do is paint the outside surfaces. Don't paint the insides. The same as if you were painting a wooden box. You're not going to paint the inside surfaces where the bees are. You're just going to paint the surfaces on the outside that are, that are uh, facing the sun. Um, so if you're looking for uh, a new and innovative uh, product available in Canada to help your bees live through our harsh Canadian winter, uh, think of the bee box system by Paradise Honey. We have a huge inventory um, and more on the way. Uh, give the shop a call. Talk to Kiara. <laughs>